Welcome back to our XOR engineer training series. This is part four, pre-processing. Now in this video, we'll be using pre-processing rules to drop incoming alerts that we don't need and deduplicate any repeat alerts that we already have instance created for, for our fictional use case. Now pre-processing in XOR happens right after the classification and mapping phase and right before an incident is actually created in XOR. Our pre-processing rules can take different actions depending on our use case. In our case, our SOC has told us they wish to drop any alerts for which the URL was already blocked or the URL category was spam. So we'll be creating a pre-processing rule to do that. Next, we want to drop and update any existing alerts with the same username and suspicious URL for which we already have an incident for. And with that, let's get to it. Now in our last video, we had configured our integration instance to fetch after we set up classification and mapping. As you can see, our integration is happily fetching all the alerts from our event generator with 444 brought in just today. If we go back to settings and integrations and instances, we can disable the fetch for this, in this instance while we set up our pre-processing rules. Building pre-processing rules, we have the ability to test them on the existing instance with an XOR. Now in this case, we were happily fetching all the URL blocked and the alerts where the URL category was spam into XOR. So we can go find a few of these and use these to help us in testing our pre-processing rules as we build it out. For that, we'll pivot over to the instant search screen and we'll just search for a few of the events that we're interested in using to test our pre-processing rule. For example, open a round bracket, we'll search for any event where the event type is URL blocked or the URL category is spam. And we'll close the round bracket and grab a few of these. Now, in order to test them with our pre-processing rule, we need to quickly investigate these. So this one is a URL blocked. We'll click investigate, which will make it available, available to us when building our pre-processing rule. We'll go back and see this one is URL allowed. So we can grab that one as well. And that should have one where the URL uh, category was spam. Next, we can basically look for anything where the URL category is not spam. So uh, we can test for ones that to make sure it will create them. So we'll say the event type is URL allowed this time. And the URL category is we'll do fish. Okay. We can investigate this guy as well. Now that we have a couple samples that we can use to build our pre-processing rule, we'll go to settings, integrations, and pre-processing rules. And let's build the first one to drop the blocked and spam events with, from our integration. Let's click new rule. Click call this drop blocked or spam URL alerts. Now, in order to build our pre-processing rule, we first need to specify a condition for which this rule will execute. In this case, we can click Add Filter, and we'll start by saying that we want this rule to execute only if the type is equal to the XOR engineer URL alert type. This will prevent this rule from executing on any other instant types within our system. Next, we can add a condition to also have it only execute where the event type is URL blocked or the URL category is spam. So we'll do event type equals URL blocked. When building the preprocess rule, we have a number of different options we can use as a comparison. You can simply click the equals and hit the plus to see if one will better suit your use case. In our case, the equals will work just fine. And we want this now to be an or. It's either event type equals URL blocked or the URL category is equal to spam. So we'll just add the or URL category and that should equal spam. Next, we need to define the action that XOR will take if our pre-processing rule matches. We have a number of different options available to us, such as closing the incident, which this will prevent the playbook from executing at all. Dropping the incident, which is what we want to do in our case. This will prevent the incident from being created as these events are being handled by the system, um, already blocking them or already categorizing them as spam. 
We'll do drop an update for the next one, but we can also do a link, a link and close, and more advanced, we can even run a, a, a script against these incidents if we want to get really fancy. Now for our case, we only want to drop these events. Give this a quick save. We'll go back and we'll edit it. And now we can test our pre-processing rule against those events that we selected earlier. We'll click test. And now we can select from the available events to see what our pre-processing rule would have done if this had been in place before we fetched the event in. We'll click test and see that this one would have been dropped as it was a URL blocked. We'll do the URL allowed, right? Same thing, this one would be dropped. This is likely spam. And we can continue on to see if any of these would work as, as we go through. Once we're done testing, we can hit done testing and hit save and enable our rule. One last thing about pre-processing rules, the rules are executed top to bottom. So order matters, just like a firewall. Once a rule executes, the flow stops and no further rules will be executed. So make sure the most important rules are at the top. And with that, let's add the second rule to deduplicate uh, instance for which we already have the same username and suspicious URL. Next, we can create our pre-processing rule to deduplicate any repeat alerts from the alerts that we do want to keep. In this case, we can click new rule or we can select copy from our existing rule and work from that. Give it a copy, we'll click edit, and we'll call this drop repeat alerts, or repeat URL alerts. And we can use the conditions from our previous one that we already specified. In this case, we still wanna execute if the incident type is XOR engineer URL alerts to prevent this from executing against any other incident types within our XOR instance but we only want it to execute where the event type is URL, URL allowed. Get rid of our URL category. So this will execute if the type is XOR engineer URL alerts and the event type is URL allowed. Next, the action we want XOR to take is a drop and update. What this means is if we already have an existing incident that matches the criteria under step three, then that incident, the new one coming in will be dropped and the existing one will be updated indicating there was a repeat event. Or if there was no match, then a new incident will be created. Now for this, we need to speci specify the criteria. So we want this to match against the oldest incident, we'll say within seven days. We can also specify we, whether we want it to search across closed incident, incidents or not. In this case, we wanna only check to see if we have an open incident where these match and ignore the closed ones. And lastly, we need the criteria that compares the incoming incident to the existing one. In this case, this would be source username of the existing incident. And instead of hard coding the equals, we can simply select our comparator here and select that it's identical to the incoming incident. So if the source username of our existing incident is the same as the new one coming in, it might match. Next, we want to match on the suspicious URL to make sure it's the same one that they clicked, and we can do the same thing. So if the source username and suspicious URLs are identical for the existing incident as the incoming, then our pre-processing rule will drop the new one, update the existing. If not, a new incident will be created. We'll give this a save, should update here, and remember that order is important. So in this case, the first rule that might execute is ones where the URL is blocked or the category is spam. That's the condition and this rule would execute first. Next, if the first rule does not execute because the condition did not match, then the second one would execute instead. So in this case, anything that's type uh, XOR engineering URL alerts and the event type is URL allowed, then we'll do our drop and update. Now that we've created our pre-processing rules, let's go back to our integration instance, click instances here, and we'll turn it back on. If we've done our job right, we should now see it starting to drop events rather than creating them if they've matched our pre-processing rules. We'll give this a few minutes and see how it looks. Welcome back. As you can see, another fetch has happened, but in this case, we dropped 12 events that matched our pre-processing rules. 
This means that we're now only bringing in the events that our SOC has told us they wish to action, which means they have less alerts to look at with an XOR. And with that, let's do a quick review of this video. Preprocessing is used to drop, deduplicate, link, and or close incoming incidents based on specific criteria. Now, when using preprocessing rules, it's important to remember the following as XOR engineers. One, preprocessing happens right before an incident is created within XOR. Two, preprocessing rules are executed from top to bottom, so order is important. Next, once a rule is triggered, the flow stops, and no further rules would then be executed. Lastly, when using the drop and update, the link, or the link and close methods, you can specify the fields of the new incident are the same as the existing incident, allowing you to deduplicate repeat events as they're brought in. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next.